How's everybody doing? It's Anthony from The Rock Studio here. I'm going to do a video tonight about the DBX Zone Pro family of audio processors. Now, this is going to be a troubleshooting and repair video. If you have ever owned or installed a Zone Pro, you may notice that over time they develop a couple issues. The two most common issues that I found are the volume knobs not responding or the volume dipping or not outputting to the speakers. So we're going to take a look at both those problems and I'm going to show you how to repair both of them. And it's not too hard to do. So just follow along with me. I'm going to walk you through every single step. And by the time we're done, you're going to be a top pro just like me. The Zone Pro is a great product. It is super affordable when it comes to price per in and output ratio. So you got to look at that. How many ins and outs does it have versus the price? It's the most affordable one on the market and it is very flexible without being overly complicated. The one downfall about the Zone Pro is that it runs extremely hot. Over time, what that heat does, it dries out the capacitors on the inside and they'll start to not work properly. They'll start to pop open. And that's when you start to experience some of these problems. Now, the first problem I want to talk about doesn't involve the capacitors, but it is simply the volume knobs on the wall stop responding. So if you go to the wall and you turn the knob, the volume doesn't go up or down properly. This might be the solution to that problem. Now, the best way to diagnose this is to log in with your computer, look at the graphical representation of that volume knob and turn it while you're looking at the computer. And if the volume knob on the screen doesn't respond, then you know you've got to replace that potentiometer in the wall. I'm going to walk you through that step by step. It's really simple. If you've never done any electronic repair, this is going to be a great opportunity for you to get your feet wet. Now, the second problem that I see with the Zone Pros are, like I said before, the capacitors heating up and popping. One way to diagnose this problem is to log into the Zone Pro, click on the Help tab, and look for Hardware Info. Now, you'll see a drop-down list of a bunch of different parameters. The one to look for would be Power Down Hits. And you can always call Harman Tech Support and tell them what you see on there, and they'll be able to guide you. In my case, what I noticed when I started to see those errors pop up and the unit wasn't really acting properly. When I'd open it up, I'd notice that the capacitors are started to go bad. We're going to replace the really generic capacitors in there with really good ones made by Panasonic. We're going to go from an 85 degree capacitor to a 105 degree cap, and that is going to be a higher spec. It's going to be able to handle and operate in higher temperature range. So that's good for us because the unit runs really hot. Nowadays, when I install a Zone Pro, I'll always put a cooling fan on it. I'll either double side tape it to the top right over the cooling grates and let it saturate that critical power supply area with cool air. Or after it's installed in a rack, I'll put a 140 millimeter fan on the side blowing right over from the power supply side to the other side and get a lot of cool air flowing around there. Cause like I said, this thing runs crazy hot. If you put one in a rack and you leave it running for a while and you stick your hand underneath on the right hand side, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's blazing hotter in there. It's like an oven. I hope this video is going to help you troubleshoot and repair your Zone Pro. And thank you so much for watching and being with me here on The Rock Studio. Now I'm going to walk you through how to troubleshoot and hopefully diagnose and repair your Zone Pro device. But keep in mind, I'm not an electronics engineer and I know just enough to be dangerous. So follow along at your own risk. This section is called Antony's Troubleshooting Steps. First, you're going to log into your Zone Pro and look for those error codes I spoke about earlier. So to do that, connect to the device open up help and then hardware info, look for power down hits and critical errors. If you're seeing a lot of errors, you're gonna to wanna to open up your Zone Pro and look for bulging capacitors. Or at this point, pack up your Zone Pro and send it back to Harman for repair. The other option would be to replace the Zone Pro with a new one. If you're having trouble setting the volume with your Zone Pro, follow these steps. Log into the Zone Pro and look at the graphical representation of the volume knob. If you're not seeing it respond to the movement of the actual knob, check the connectors. Just give them a visual inspection to make sure they look good. If they're in good shape, then the next step is to check the cable using a network test tool. Remember the ZC bus runs over CAT5E or CAT6 cable, whatever you have network cable wise. So grab a network testing tool like the one in the video description check the cables. If the cable looks bad, go ahead and re-terminate the connections. Test it again. If it looks good and you're still having volume problems, you're going to have to either replace the potentiometer or replace the entire zone control device with another ZC2 or ZC3. The replacement potentiometer will cost less than three bucks, but a new zone control device could be anywhere from 50 to $60. Now I'll demonstrate how to replace the potentiometer. First, disassemble the zone control device, pop the volume knob off, and use a C-wrench or whatever you have to loosen that nut. 
flip it over and squeeze the end of those posts together towards the center and then you can wedge your fingers in between pop the circuit board off the back. The volume pot's on these really long 90 degree legs so bend the body of the pot out of the way and you're going to clip those legs off with some kind of wire clipper. It's important to leave a bit of a stem sticking out that you can grab with a needle nose pliers. I need to point out that I haven't had any luck cleaning these pots with deoxit to get them to work again. Seems like once they stop working they're totally done and you can't clean them and bring them back to life. You've got to replace the pot. Obviously that's why I'm going through this process with you. You want to make sure that the solder is melted all the way through so you don't accidentally pull off any copper trace that could be located on the top side of the circuit board that you don't see from the back. After you've removed all three stems, use a solder sucker to get all the solder out of the holes. This is the replacement pot. It's an Alpha B50K, so it's a linear taper. It's detented. I haven't been able to find the specific part on Mauser. I didn't really look too hard elsewhere. If you're able to find one online, please drop me a message. I've been ordering the replacement pots right from Harman. You can take your time and solder all three legs pretty well. There's no risk of damaging this component from heat. This type of pot isn't really sensitive to heat, plus those legs are really long. When you're done soldering, you can use a little alcohol on a cotton swab to clean any remaining flux off the circuit board. It's just a way to keep things neat and tidy. Use a little bit of that alcohol on a paper towel to clean the faceplate off while you're at it. My main market is audio systems for restaurants, so the volume knobs and source selectors get pretty grimy and greasy over time, so I typically clean these pretty frequently. Now stick the stem of the pot through the hole and then line up those posts on the back of the circuit board and use a small screwdriver to gently spread it out. Keep in mind you can break those little ends off the post pretty easily. Now that you've got that new potentiometer installed, hopefully it works, so hook it up to your zone control bus and see if it did the trick. If you've never done anything like this before, hopefully you were able to get this far and you should be extremely proud of yourself. To fix the other issues of your Zone Pro, we're going to replace the capacitors. So first off, take out the top set screw using a 332nd Allen key. Take the four screws out of the sides. There's a couple smaller size Phillips head screws around those RCA jacks, and then there's one more over the SPDIF input. Now pop the lid off and inspect those large capacitors over by the power supply. Those are the ones that are most likely going to be bulging on the top. If they are, continue along. If they're not, maybe send your unit back to Harman to figure out what's wrong. Depending on what model Zone Pro you have, there may be other capacitors on the board that need to be replaced. So just make a note of any of them that are bulging, write down the number of microfarads and write down the voltage of them as well. You can use a C-wrench to start to loosen all the standoffs that are on top. The trickiest part to disassembling and reassembling is going to be the daughter board for the mic slash line input module. The trick is to push the little plastic lenses through gently before attempting to lift the back of the board up. As a side note here, I want to point out, while you've got this thing apart, I would clean all the contacts, especially those two switches by the mic line inputs, clean all the I.O. connectors and even those serial connectors using some deoxit. At this point, unfortunately, you've got to take off that serial connector on the back. It's a real pain in the butt to get it started. I'm going to leave that ribbon cable connected on the front. To remove that lens assembly is another big pain in the butt that I don't want to cover in this video. You're going to start to heat up and loosen the solder on those big power supply caps. The solder that was used when this product was made is most likely lead free. It makes it tricky and more difficult to loosen up and to melt. So to help do that, just add a little normal solder. The easiest way to get those caps off is to heat one leg from the back with the soldering iron while keeping your finger on on the other side and as soon as it melts you can kind of bend it out of the way. Then do the same thing for the other leg. This next part is critical. You have to remove all the solder from the through holes for those old capacitors. If you don't, you won't be able to fit the legs of the new capacitors through. The way to do this is to use some solder wick. To get started, put a little bit of solder on the tip of your iron, hold it down onto the solder wick, and eventually it will heat up enough to where it melts the solder on the board, and it'll wick it up into that copper braid using the phenomenon of capillary action. You've got to be patient and keep at this process. Eventually, you'll see the holes open right up. At that point, you'll know you're good to go. You'll eventually see I switch to a wider chisel point from my soldering iron. You want a wider distribution of heat on that copper braid. You can see what happens when you try to use a solder sucker on holes this small. It doesn't really work. So just persevere and use that solder wick and you're going to get through it. 
I'm going to use my multimeter to test some of the capacitors that I removed. You'll see that this one is still in spec. This one is out of spec. These caps have a 20% tolerance, and these are 1000 microfarad caps. There could be a difference of 200 microfarads and it would still be specking out properly. Here's a close-up of a bulging capacitor to see what it looks like on the top. If it gets really hot and dry, that whole top segment will pop open and it would boil off all the electrolyte that's inside. Here's a bulging cap versus a normal one. Take a look at the fine print on the side and you'll see that these are rated for 85 degrees Celsius and they were produced in February of 2008. The Panasonic caps I'm replacing them with rated for 105 degrees Celsius. Take a look at the circuit board and you'll notice the little plus sign and the square solder pad. That's going to be for the positive leg, which on these capacitors and many capacitors is the longer one. The round solder pad is the negative sign, so line up the shorter leg and that negative symbol printed on the side of the capacitor with that round solder pad. You can start by putting a couple capacitors through and then go ahead and solder them in from the back. You wet the tip of the soldering iron with a little bit of solder and then heat up the leg and the pad at the same time and wait until you see the solder sort of wick its way into the hole. These capacitors aren't super sensitive to heat so you can feel comfortable soldering these in pretty well. Obviously don't go crazy and melt them, but you do want that solder to go all the way in just in case there's a solder trace on the other side of the board. It's a little tricky to hold the capacitor flush against the board while you're soldering it in. If you have another person there that could help you, it would be a little bit easier. Repeat that process with the cotton swab and the alcohol to clean the rosin off the back of the board. Now reassemble everything. If you saved your program, you can hit that CPU reset button that's on the circuit board and see what happens. It might clear away some of those error codes. You'll probably have to reload your scene in there, so just make sure you have it saved before you do anything like this. I'm going to show you how to put that daughter board back on. Lightly set the daughter board in place and then push those two plastic lenses on with the needle nose plier before you try to push the daughter board onto those IO jacks. Make sure everything is lined up and then gently finesse it until it goes in. I hope you were able to solve whatever problem you had with your Zone Pro by following along to this video. If you haven't, please leave a message in the comments. If you know of a better solution or a different solution, please leave me a message as well. And if you need any advice about this sort of device or anything similar, please drop me a line. And as always, thank you so much for watching and come back again and see what we're up to here at The Rock Studio.